such an idiot. What the <laughs> fuck was that? I was already thinking about it. It's about your takeaways from this game. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. <laughs> A couple of things. This is going to be a fucking long year, dude. (laughs) It's early. We did Parmesan cheese talk last night, and now we're like we're already fire talk for three straight hours. Well, we're going to spend a lot of time on that. I promise you. Oh, my God. Let me say this. It's early. It's 5%. Eight games. Every eight games is 5% of a season. They're three and five. You can't say that it's early, John. I know. I just I know. I know. But hear me out. You can't lose home games with you Darvish on the mound as dominant as he was. No. So it's not on Darvish and Wilson Contreras took him deep, but they had chances even after falling behind. The Luis Campusano play, I have no idea how you can't make that play. I mean, you just, and I don't know if they win the game if he makes that play. They were trailing. It's not like they scored another run later, but it's just like, like the more things change, the more they stay the same. And I know you put that on, on social media. It feels the last two days feel like 2023. So let's just start here. Make your way in and subscribe. All right. We're trying to get to 6,000 subscribers. It's not going to be easy because of the Padres. Um, Smash the like button for us. (laughs) (laughs) Just straight truth bombs, dude. (laughs) <laughs> well, it's not our fault. I'm not the one not stepping on home plate. Okay, can I? Well, can't be sound as great. He's he's been awesome. Here's he's been awesome. All right. So, so before before I truly dive into this st- stupid game, you're watching this right now, or you're watching on a replay. Okay. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Let's get to 150 likes tonight. I know it's a it's a, it's a loss, so there's not a lot of people that will want to like this episode, but. Mr. It's, Cardinals fan. Mr. Cardinals fan. So th- let's get 150 likes to start out with tonight. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Um, and we appreciate you all for doing that and joining us on this episode. Okay. After the game, I heard Mike Schilt. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I like Mike Schilt, but the 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 the, the cocky names. Everyone's got to be. Campy and crony. Okay, he called Tyler Wade Wadey. I'm not even. I'm not. Even, I wasn't even to bring that up. I just. I know. No, I thought that's of too, it. That's too far. Okay. This is the big leagues, Mike. We aren't giving out participation trophies for effort. It's about results, and his explanation and his kind of coddling of uh, Campy Sano Campy, Campy for not having the foot on the bag was in. In my opinion, tough embarrassing. baseball play, embarrassing, bro. It's the fucking big leagues. You're a major league catcher. If you expect him to be your everyday catcher, put your foot on the bag. Yeah, I mean, it's a force play. It's, it's not a. Wait, dynamic did you listen play. to this, John? It was. I a, did. I, I did. I did. Like, he's like, it's a tough baseball play. That's what he said. He's like, like, it's like, I love cool. the effort, and he's just great, and blah blah blah. It's great. It's no, great. the it's tough like, play was by Wadey. By Wadey. <laughs> Wadey, that was a tough play. I want to hear. From Mike Schilt. Yeah, gotta have the foot in the bag. Gotta have the gotta have the foot in the bag. Wait, wait, he made a great play. Uh-huh. Gotta have foot in the bag. A- end of end of discussion. I don't want to hear like him like protecting guys. Like, what are we doing here? Hold hold him like 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 Mike says right. in the chat, hold him accountable. Totally. Like, I know he I know Campy Sono pro- Campy probably knows like f- I fucked up, but to hear the manager kind of just like dismiss it and be like, that's fine. Like, no, that's bullshit. Man, you're not kidding. This could be a long year. R- real quick, subscribe, smash the like button. We're on X, at John Schaefer, at Jim Russell SD. We're going to get to all the supers. We see them rolling in. We're going to start momentarily. So thank you for your support of the channel, the Super Chat. Seriously, I mean, we are just getting started on the season. And thank you for the memberships. Click the um the join button down below. Um, Let's get to the first super of the night. There's going to be a lot to react to tonight. I mean, there, there's a lot to react to tonight um and i think we should start here this is appropriate thank you matthew puts things in perspective rip larry lucchino uh had a couple of or heard a couple great stories in the lexus club bar tonight uh petco park doesn't happen without him well said um we, we certainly are um echo those sentiments um 
And I'm sure a lot of Padres fans have been paying the respects, baseball fans in general, over the last 12 hours or so. So that is really good perspective. Um, who even knows what the state of the franchise looks like without Larry Lucchino? Um, you know, 25 plus years ago and during the, you know, the birth essentially of Petco Park. So a, a good way to start the show. Um, it puts things in perspective. These are eight baseball games this year. Nothing has been determined. Um, and that was sad to hear, obviously, earlier today. We're not doing the show probably without Larry Lucchino tonight, honestly. Because without Larry Lucchino, the Padres don't get Petco Park built and the Padres are not in San Diego anymore, probably. Right. I mean, they're definitely not playing it, you know, back then the Murph, <laughs> right? They're oh, right. Walcom, yeah. right? That thing is gone. That thing's not open. Yep. Um, so yeah, I think every I mean, this the sports in this town, sports people in this town, the reporters, everything owe a lot to Larry Lucchino for playing a huge role in getting Petco Park built and and in in turn keeping the Padres here in San Diego. No doubt. Thank you, Matthew, for starting it off. Um, Mob Belvin, thank you for maybe the super sticker. It doesn't show up in our software, thank you, but Mob. thank you for your support of the channel. Let's get to Vector53, longtime uh, supporter and viewer here on the wrap-up show, who says, uh, good pitching, let down by our offense, no way. Yeah, like where have you heard that before? And again, I'm thinking at the whole night, Jim. I'm sure it, it's 2-1. Darvish is so efficient. He had allowed like two hits in five or six innings. He's mowing guys down. Um, he was efficient. He was, he's been really good. I mean, his first three starts, you, you can't have any complaints about the way he's pitched. He's the first starter to go six innings this year for the Padres, but you're sitting on a one run lead and that's a tough way to play nine innings. And the second they went down three, two, and by the way, they go down three, two, Jim. And then it's, what was it? Two on one out for crony and crony ripped the ball <laughs> to his credit right up the middle off the mound, double play. And that's basically the last time the Padres threatened as uh manny would say that's baseball right that's kinda baseball was. you got it kind of was in that sense like you have the the shortstop positioned perfectly yep. um but what were they with men in scoring position as as shilty said they were they did well tonight they went two for seven yeah i mean it's honestly by last year's standards it's fine you know, uh, the Cardinals in turn went 0 for 6 with runners in scoring position and scored five yeah, runs. Baseball works. Yeah. That's baseball. It is. I mean, I guess it is. Thank you, Vector. Uh, Trevor, I, thank you. Thank you, Trevor. Thanks, guys, for the supers. Just click the dollar sign below the chat box. We're just getting started. Padres lose, by the way, tonight at Peco 5 2 to the Cardinals. They are two games under 500 for the first time this year. They'll try to avoid a home sweep at the hands of a really bad team a year ago in St. Louis uh, tomorrow afternoon. He says, We will never win when Machado, Xander, and Kim go 0 for 12. Uh, just sad. Thought we would be playing for Peter. We can't make gross generalizations yet. We 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 don't have all the answers. Enough. We yeah, we, we don't there. we don't have enough data points here. I mean, we can be critical and you can be disappointed, but we can't say they haven't quote unquote played for Peter or this right. is who they are. I mean, they could be better than this. They could be worse than this, or they could be this. We just we don't have enough. They've only played three teams. They're going to play all 29 other teams. So we need to obviously give it more time. But a lot of people are hoping for better than three and five out of the gates, and they're three and five out of the gates. So that's just – that's who they are right now. Uh, it, it's – like you said, it's 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 early in a standpoint of we can't say this team is this or that um, yet. We, there's hope of like after opening day, you're like, shit, maybe this is a little different this year. And then you're like, I don't know. And then th Sunday happens. You're like, cool. All right. And then the last two nights, you know, four of the, f of the six games, this homestand have, have been really bad and they've been 2023 Padres. Um, you know, even game one in Korea, you're like, it, again, it's whatever, but those games still count. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm just looking at, you know, tonight in that, I think it was the eighth inning, the eighth inning. Um, those are just horrible at bats. Mike, I mean, Schulte tonight, like credited everyone's fighting, but those at bats tonight in the eighth inning were God awful. They were just very bad. Starting with Manny Machado, that, that at bat was just a piss poor at bat. Um, no question about it. And, and how really, overpowered were they in the ninth inning? Oh, besides campy, it just like who actually was the one guy that was fighting tonight at the plate. Yeah. It felt like. Um, Toddy had a nice night, 
two, you know, had two base hits there. Mm-hmm. Um, stolen base. I think he has stolen base. Am I a mistake? I don't think he actually had a stolen base. I'm just kidding. Whatever. And if you say it, whatever. But um, uh, they had no stolen bases tonight. No stolen base. Oh, Toddy had one. Toddy, I, yeah, I thought he, I knew Toddy had one. Yeah. God, it's so cringe. Um, yeah, it just felt. I mean, these last two games has has felt eerily similar to 2023, and that shit to start the year is going to piss a lot of people off because the more the 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 more the season goes on, the more you have these types of games, the more it's going to start creeping in to the identity of the 2024 Padres potentially. And you don't want that. That's why I said get out to a fast start to completely wipe away the shit stain that was 2023. Because if you start playing to start your season like you did in 2023, then like the bad thoughts could potentially creep back in. Like, is this happening? Is this really happening again? You know, I mean, this team didn't have a complete overhaul of the roster. The main guys are still there. And so that's why it was so that's why it's so important for for I think to get out to a, a much better start than you did last year so you can just like all right cool we we're, we're not even talking about 2023 anymore we are moved on to 2024 this is a different team we're doing things different this year and we're not gonna have last year creep back in to 2024 but unfortunately for the first home stand here it has in a big way yeah and, and I hate to be the guy to be like look at the schedule on April 2nd but I'll I'll do it from now through Jim's wedding weekend, Memorial Day weekend against the Yankees. Nice choice. Um, it wasn't my choice. I'm kidding. Um, like, like, let's just talk about this for a second. Between now and like the first marker of the season, which for me is Memorial Day weekend, like, I'll just give you a sampling. Like, what's to come after this Cardinal series? You have nine of your next 12 on the road, including Oracle, Dodger Stadium, and Milwaukee on the road with the Cubs at home. Then you have like random home series against like the Phillies and the Reds. You go to Arizona and you go to the Cubs in May. You have the Dodgers at home. You go to Atlanta. You go to Cincinnati. Then you have the Yankees. That's not every series, but I'm telling you right now, among the 30 teams, this has to be one of the 10 most difficult schedules in baseball from now through Memorial Day. Well, even out, yeah, every team plays every team. Sure, the divisions make it unbalanced, but this is a tough division as well. It just... You know, I'm not saying it's going to get away from anyone. They're three and five, but there's a scenario where it can get away from you because they're playing good teams and they'll have to play well and they'll have to at least tread a little bit. And um, I think they can do that. I really do think they can do that. It's just, I mean, what if things don't go well? What if you lose a series in San Francisco? You lose a series at Dodger Stadium. You lose a series in Milwaukee and you look up and it's April and you're five, six, seven, eight under. It's possible. I'm not predicting it. I'm just telling you, you're playing games at Dodger Stadium and at Oracle where it's like a house of horrors for the Padres. So I'm just saying like antenna should be up if you're Mike Schilt and in, if you're in that clubhouse, like the whole it's early and, you know, back of the baseball card. And no, you, you need to win series now and you need to avoid falling five games under 500 in April and trying to dig out of anything early on. That's the last thing you want to do is be digging out of anything in April. I just thought... And I, and it still could be the case, right? I just, I just hope that this team to start the year has some urgency, you know, because it's the you're hearing the same things, like, you know, oh, our bats will come around, like, I, okay, cool, that's great, but the thing is, we've heard that for how many years here? Three out, of, two out of the last three, I know that. Um, and guess what? They didn't come around. It, it, so, uh. You, you just hope that there's at least some urgency from this team to start the year out better than they did last year. Um, you know, that's why 2022, 2022, they were fantastic to start the this, this season. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. And they went into a 500 lull for most of the rest of the season. But guess what the start of the season did for them? Got them to 89 wins. Because without the start of that season, they don't sniff the playoffs and they don't make the NLCS. So it's important sometimes, you know, you start out a season hot and you start out on a good note, it gives you wiggle room throughout the season to not have to go on these crazy like eight, nine, ten game winning streaks to get back in it, you know? And and, and that's why the start of this year, I think, is just so important for this team because 
this team is not built to win 10, 12 in a row. I mean, when's the last time this team even did that? <laughs> it's been a long time. Maybe last September. I don't even remember. And that doesn't last really September count. doesn't even count to me. I agree. Um, JD's third. Thank you. He says, Mike. I think he means Sh Schilt. Schilty? Sh Mike um, shit? <laughs> <laughs> does nothing but give compliments and hand out trophies. Presume. Listen, I got no issue with Mike Schilt. I, I actually like him more than I like. I I, I kind of like the way he went about it in spring training. I like his persona. I do. I, like him too. I think he's a good baseball man. <laughs> um, but like at, at some point, you're gonna have to get a little bit real with, with Padres fans and with the media and with your team. Like you know, at some point, you need you'll need to like you know, kick this thing into gear. And maybe it's not yet. I, I get it. I'm, I'm not calling out the team and flipping over tables tonight. That, no. I, that's not what I'm doing. But no. I, to your point, I mean, I think holding players accountable is fair and also being credit where due. Luis Campisano has been great at the plate. He's hit 408 games. He's, mm -hmm. he's a big reason why their offense has performed, I think, better than people probably would have said through eight games, even with the last two nights. So he's been a very good offensive weapon and hopefully will be. Uh, defensively, like, Let's be clear, that was not good. Like that, that is a game changing moment. I don't know if they're going to win. They didn't score again. So there's a good chance they don't win. But there's a difference between keeping a game 3 2 and then having it stretch out to 5 2. And everyone understands that. And I mean, that's, that's on Luis Camposano. It's, it's not on anyone else. Yeah. If this team last year, you know, you gave this team the benefit of the doubt last season because guess what? They made the NLCS. Okay. So the start of the year when they were not playing well, I mean, like they're playing okay actually last year. I think the start of the season they were found five hundred, a couple games over here in the yeah, Dodgers. They beat the Dodgers game one. They were like fifteen and fourteen, or seventeen and sixteen, or seventeen and fourteen at one point. Yeah, I think. went in the tank. But you gave them the benefit of the doubt because they mm -hmm. were just coming off of an NLCS run. The it felt like the confidence of this team and that and going into that season was a, 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 an all time high. Like the swag of the team was like, we're going to go out there and we're going to just, just kill everybody. We're going to win a bunch of games, you know, didn't happen. They got humbled very quickly, but you know, that's why we said last year it was early. It's early. It's early mm -hmm. because they had benefit of the doubt. They don't have the benefit of the doubt here coming off of last year. No one's going to want to hear like legitimately if you're serious, it's early. You don't want to hear that as a Padres fan. It, you just don't. You don't have this team has no benefit of the doubt. So this nonchalantness to start the year by Schilty, I'm like, mm, I don't know if people want to hear that, bro. I, I think people want a little more like, you know, we got to be better. Um, that play can't happen. Uh, this needs to happen. Um, we have to have better at bats instead of like the. I mean, well, you know, he did, he tried his best, and I think we're fighting out there and blah 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 blah. Like right, he, he, and they also said post game, like, you know, he, he, in his determination, like they haven't given away in a bad yet this year, but that's not Bullshit. what we've seen. There, there's already been a couple of really bad late innings. Like you said today in the eighth, maybe yesterday in the ninth. Um, so yeah, that that's, it's one thing to say that it's another thing to believe it. I don't know if he actually believes that or not. Um, Steve, thank you for the super. He says, remember when I said a hundred losses, this team won't lose a hundred games. No, so, I'm no, no, sorry. No. I mean, if it does, you won't, Mike Schilt won't be anywhere near managing this team in September, and AJ Pro really won't AJ be Pro. general manager general manager of this team to complete right. the season either. Yeah, it'll be a clean. It will be cleaning at the house. Complete uh, cleaning of the house in, in August. That's a hundred loss season, right? Because yeah. you, you don't lose a hundred games by all of a sudden losing every single game in September to get to hundred losses. Like you, no, you know you suck yeah. at a certain point in time in the middle of the season. Yeah, 50 and 75 percent. I don't see this team being 50 and 75. And I hope I'm right. I mean, that that's crazy talk. I mean, with what they've yeah. invested and the talent that's on this roster, I mean, that would be absurdly disappointing and as disappointing as last year was, <laughs> if not more so. Um, uh, Mauricio, thank you for the super chat. He says, honeymoon over this blows. Um, <laughs> other than fam, anyone out there you guys think could help love the show? Brandon Bell can help. <laughs> He can absolutely help. Um, again, it's not necessarily a position of need. There are not a lot of free agents available, and you don't trade for anyone, obviously, on April 2nd. And I don't know what their system looks like in terms of paying dividends. You know, I don't know if Jacob Marcy is going to save the season in left field. Um, I don't know if Wusako, who's in double A, is going to save the team. Double so, A. <laughs> yeah, this is a little bit of a burn the ships. I mean, even if you sign Tommy Pham, nobody's going to be like, oh, 
there it goes. Everything's changed. I mean, they'll have serious work to do if they add Tommy Pham, Brandon Bell, Jacob Marcy, or whomever at this point. Yeah. It's the, every day that passes without, I mean, Tommy Pham still out there kind of signals to me they're probably not going to sign Tommy Pham because if they were, they were going to do it. If they were going to, they probably would have already. Right. Mm -hmm. I think so. I mean, I don't know. I really have no feel for it. Yeah. I don't know I just, what he's waiting for. I'm just not the type of person to be like, especially with this team and what happened this off season and what happened last year. It's different if it's the dot, if we're, if we're doing a, uh, an, a Braves post game show or like even a uh, Dodgers post game show. Okay. Um, this team does not have any benefit of the doubt. Okay. So, um, I'm not going to sit here and say, yeah, it's a tough loss, but yeah, they'll go get him tomorrow. Like, no, I'm not going to say it. I don't think anybody really wants to hear it. And so with that being said, yeah, the honeymoon does feel like it is over and it was over quickly because this season at home has not looked good so far to start like the starting homestand of the season, like reminds you of last, last year's homestand to start the year where, you split with the Rockies, and I think what happened after that. I don't even know what happened after that. Who but knows. Just, but, you, but am I wrong? Like, am no, I you're not wrong. Because, I mean, like, no, I mean, I think you feel. I think we feel like fans should feel right now. I mean, don't you feel like you can't get swept at home by the St. Louis Cardinals tomorrow? Don't you feel that way? Like, of course you can. The season doesn't end if it happens. But like, what kind of omen is that? You start your season, you get swept at home. Yeah. With you, Darvish, and Joe Musgrove pitching in that series, you get swept, swept at home by the St. Louis Cardinals. I mean, that's not a good start. And I'm telling you, you go to home opener for the Giants, then all of a sudden you, you kind of in a spot where you can't lose that series. Then what if you do? Like, it, the thing happens quick. We talked about it a lot last year. I mean, nobody's going to feel bad for the Padres if they're not playing good baseball. Other teams will take advantage of them if that's the case. Alex, thank you for the generous super. Appreciate you, man. Thanks, he Alex. He says – uh Waited 20 minutes in line so my kid could go down to do slides. Gallagher Square, it looks cool. Um, awesome. Petco is packed with fans who love the team and paid a premium to be there on a Tuesday night. We deserve better than this LFGSD. Um, I said it a lot last year. I mean, Petco's a, a magnificent facility. I think the Padres have marketed the team incredibly well. Seeing their success is a good thing. It's allowed them to invest, but it's absurdly disappointing from a fan perspective i'm watching there's forty thousand people on a tuesday night against the cardinals in april off a disappointing year and offensively they once again score two runs they've done it back-to-back -back days monday and tuesday night first homestand of the year with forty thousand people other teams are playing in front of nine thousand people and it's 44 and raining mm -hmm. so it's like you you have every advantage in the world it feels like you have all the backing in the world padres fans love this team they're so loyal and forgiving they're not booing every single second if, the, if this happened in philadelphia in front of forty thousand, then forty thousand, they start three and five people would not be thrilled so I, I i kind of agree with that sentiment from alex and hopefully they start playing better like tomorrow yeah i mean and you'll see a lefty on the mound tomorrow i would probably assume they're gonna sit jackson merrill and they're gonna sit weighty day game maybe play zokar play zokar and play eggy and play Higgy behind the plate potentially, mm -hmm. but you, to sit can't be Sano after what he's done the last week here. You're just no, you're asking I'm for play, it. Yeah, I'm like playing him in center field. <laughs> I'm, play, I'm playing him <laughs> anywhere. But um, yeah, Joe has to pitch well tomorrow. He just has to. And we haven't even talked about this bullpen, John. We This, this, this bullpen might We have. Problem. You mean tonight we haven't? Tonight. Yeah, yeah we have not talked about it tonight. They... they they might be a problem this year. I might have been completely off on this bullpen. And I'll, I'll admit win, that. I mean, two innings, two runs, one earned. Um, the bullpen has been really disappointing and underwhelming. It's too early, again, for me to make some overarching generalization on their abilities. But you got all kinds of like, do we really know what's going to happen with like a Wandy Peralta who was great a year ago but you're asking a lot of him yuki matsui we're asking a lot of this guy he's never pitched in the big leagues robert suarez to be your primary closer after you had like a hall of fame caliber closer and josh Hader. i mean you just 
you're, you're putting some guys in positions where they need to come through, where they haven't previously been asked to fill that role. Suarez, closer. Matsui, set up. Peralta, follow up a good year with a new organization in a new league. Um, at least Rich got me a poncho. Thank you, Rich. I appreciate that. You can wear it on, on, on the radio, John. And I will. You, and you can wear it on here, and you can promote you know, poncho. our competition. Perfect. Our, what the poncho is not our competition. <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, thank you, Rich. I appreciate that. Um, okay, let me tell you about Mark Nimitz. We want to tell you about our title sponsor. We can't do this without the support of our sponsors and our viewers. We're, we're not here without you guys. We're not here without Mark Nimitz. He's been with us since day one of the wrap up show on YouTube. Guys, you can save you a ton of money on your insurance. Just the next time you have a renewal, call Mark. Uh, okay, so click the link in the description down below. Mark is such a loyal Padres fan. So passionate. He'd love to talk to you about the Padres. He'd love to talk to you about saving money on your insurance. And you can take it from us like he is a great insurance agent. I've got homeowners, life insurance, and an earthquake insurance policy through Mark. He has saved me and my family so much money and time. We had to file a claim. In 2022, we were outside of our house, I think, for two weeks. He saved us like thousands of dollars and dozens of hours of time. So thank you, Mark. But you can get to his website. You can get free quotes online. You can call him. He'll give you free quotes. He'll talk to you about the Padres. Uh, he's a great insurance agent. You can take that from us. And again, he's our title sponsor. If you support our work, please get in contact with Mark Nimitz by clicking the link in the description down below. Yep. All his information is down below. Mnimitz at farmersagent.com. When you reach out to him, let him know that John and Jim from the wrap up show uh, sent you. Um, can I just read this real quick? Cause I just saw this on social media. Um, and thank you for uh, our buddy, Will Holder for retweeting this. Mm. So what was the biggest thing or one of, there's a bunch. What was one of the big things to, to, for this season to be successful in order for like, in order for this season to be success, successful, what things would need to happen? That would be the stars need to be the stars. Sure. 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 You're talking like Manny and Tati and Tati and Manny and bogey. Bogey. Sure. Okay. Um, specifically Manny and bogey. Who both okay, had, bad, had both had bad years last year and are both making a shit ton of money. Mm -hmm. uh, Friday's loss, they were combined one for eight. Saturday's loss, they were combined one for eight. Monday's loss, they were combined two for seven. And tonight, they're combined zero oh for eight. This is Manny and X. <laughs> Manny and Bogey, yes. Manny and Bogey. So that is um, that is four for four, four thirty one. Four for thirty one. Not great. Like, heavy's and, the head that wears the crown. It's just so it's just so frustrating because you see guys like Mookie Betts, and he's just tearing the cover off the baseball right now. Mm -hmm. And you're like, bro, what the hell? Now M Mookie doesn't have to do that entirely because his team is stacked offensively. But like, you know, stars got to be the stars this year, and it's very early for them. But stars got to be the stars. I mean, we, we can also, like, let's be clear for a second. Wade has been A+. Plus. Pauly, Wadey? Wadey and Paulie have been A+. Plus. But, guys, Manny Machado's got to get back in the field soon. He's a big part of the heart and soul of the team. He's an excellent plus-plus defender that is gold glove caliber. Now we'll see, coming off this elbow. And I'm not blaming him for not being in the field. He's coming off an injury. I'm not telling him to get out there if he's not healthy. But it, I'm I'm a little concerned about that. This all this idea that oh well, they got Tyler Wade and they have Graham Pauly and Manny can just DH. But Tyler Wade and Graham Pauly aren't near good enough to be playing every day for a competitive playoff team in 2024. As of now, do we all yeah. agree with that? Think yeah. about the difference. You get Wade or Paulie out of there. With all due respect, they Paulie may play a role for this team in 2024. We can have that conversation. And Wade may as well as a reserve. But you put Machado with third, you DH Campisano, you've gotten a lot better on offense. So play, as in, you don't have to play Tyler Wade if Manny Machado's in the field. You don't have to play Grand Pauly. And I'm not saying don't play Grand Pauly, but you're trying to make the postseason. So, like, do we understand that? Like, you're playing guys that aren't playing if Manny's playing in the field. Like that's that is a 
simple factual statement that needs to be addressed again you can get away with it for a week or two or three but not all year you can't play tyler wade at third all year and jerks and profile and left all year and think you're gonna outplay teams to a po postseason spot I don't, I don't see it i mean and we'll have kevin acia on the show on friday but has is there any up have you seen any update has Machado Every when i tweeted people are like mid to late april I, I i'm sure people have said that i mean we heard even earlier, remember in spring training, we thought hey, maybe he'll be full go for Korea. It is Manny. It was hard to kind of doubt his ability to get back on the field. Yeah. And then it, it just, and then it goes back to, you know, the timing of the whole surgery. Like his bat is the most important thing. We both agree on that. But yeah, he could have had surgery three and a half weeks earlier. Yeah. And, and, and by the way, you're not, I mean, your bat is kind of cold right now to start the season again. What's he, what's he hit? What's he hitting? Um, what is he hitting? He is 226 hitting. with an 817 OPS, which is obviously solid. Yeah. But he's hit 226. You know, and, and, and look, I know that Manny will have a stretch where it's like, oh of my God, he, yep. he always does. I, I will. I, I know that I just do. Mm -hmm. Um, but no, he said he's too good of an offensive player. Yeah. Right. But like you, Unfortunately, not unfortunately, you, you need more. You just do. He is the guy, okay? He's hitting in the middle of your lineup. He is the highest paid player on this team. He's got to be a stud for a majority of this season. Everybody goes through stretches. Everybody has bad games. Everybody goes 0 for 15s or whatever the case. Like, it, it happens. We know mm -hmm. that. But, like... I'm sorry, you 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 need to be better for your team this year in, in totality, and 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 it could still happen. Absolutely, I'm just I'm just reiterating like he needs to be that 2022 version of Manny Machado this year, and not 2023 version. H B B B V P P P P J J J J J. Thank you. Um, he says Manny and Bogey need less ego and. Ja Rule. <laughs> what? What? And more BP. What, decipher this for me, Jim. Okay. Manny and X need less ego and Ja Rule. Dude, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> it's a possibility. Um, I'm not sure. Can right. we talk a first second? <laughs> oh, here we go. I, I hate to segue like this, but I think I have to. The Mike Winters in booth experiment went way too far. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I think Jesse's an outstanding broadcaster. Fantastic. And and Mud's terrific. And Fantastic. we know that's Don, but Don wasn't. So this is nothing to do with Jesse or Mud at all. I think they're both outstanding, and I thought they really did well. And I think they actually very much enjoyed having Mike Winters with them. With all that being said, what are we doing? Who are we appealing to? I mean, mm. I'm a lifer in the sport. I, I I eat and sleep this like Jim does and all you guys do. And this is way too much. It was mm. way too much. We're talking about positioning of umpires. What are we doing? No one. I, you want less umpires in a game, not more. Nobody wants a game discussed breaking down umpires. I mean, what on earth? was that i thought it was going to be for half inning it ended up being for the entire game i i and i know other people thought the same thing it was just way too much nothing and against I, right? mike and not no. against mike winners either no. it's just like what are we asking of him no and, and um probably taking you behind the curtain this is like a a major league baseball thing. I don't think this is like a Padres thing. I don't think this is, it is a one night thing. No, this is an all season thing. They announced that like, I think a couple nights ago. What do you mean? All season? Like every one game? day. No, no one. Like I think every Tuesday home game, they'll be doing it with Mike winners. I'm, I think who, who is asking for this? You know, what I mean? like, and, like, and, and what, I, what I'm saying is I think the the things that, that, that the Padres broadcast in totality pre, do they even do pregame? No, they don't. Yes. Do 
They do? Okay. They do pre Pre-game and uh, the Mike Winters thing and the post-game thing, I think that that in totality, right, has is a major league base major league baseball's dis- decisions mm-hmm. rather than like the Padres deciding they wanted to do these things. Okay. Um, and as of right now, so it's like an experiment, maybe. I like. Hope are they it, trying to do what? What's the dude's name you, on Fox Television with the NFL who's been doing it? You know, uh, the Burkhart. Hey, let's go. No, but let's go to the the freaking official. The oh, commentary, you know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, the, the the umpire or the referee. Sorry. But who are you? Who, you know, what I'm talking about the guys that slick gray Mike hair. Pereira. Mike Pereira. Mike Pereira. Yeah. And they do that in the NBA, maybe or I don't know, college football. But like, do we need it in baseball? It only works in baseball for like, hey, reviews. Like, reviews. Yeah, here's Mike Winters. What did you see here, Mike? Oh, he's so clearly in the line. We, oh, thanks, Mike. Why the fuck are we having like a conversation with them? And again, nothing against Jesse or Mud or, or Mike. It's just no, it's really I, not. I think it, this was a like a directive from whoever's in charge of this freaking broadcast to do this. And you know, when you're give when you're given shit, you gotta make chicken out of shit or whatever the saying is. Chicken shit? I don't even know. I mean, and that's what Jesse times. and Mud are trying to do. They're trying to no, make- and I thought they actually enjoy I mean, I think they like it. I mean, again. The baseball, the baseball nerd in me, I I could enjoy it personally, but I don't think my audience, I don't think it works for my audience. Like I don't think people are sitting there night in and night out. Like why is the first base umpire position on one knee? No one cares. Uh, when someone's trying to turn a double play or like, no hey, cares. what's the plate umpire thinking on? I don't care. No one cares. But I don't think anyone. If I don't care and you don't care, then I don't think anyone cares. It just um, was like a conversation that, like, the guys, there's a game going on here. You know, yeah, like you Darvish is in, like, oh, by the way, Winters is talking through the Contreras home run, the yeah. biggest moment of the game. Right. We were talking umpiring. That's a mess. Less is more, uh, guys. Less is more. Run it back says lineup needs a shake up, need protection behind Manny. Kim does not do that. Pitchers just have to throw Manny junk around the plate. No worries. I don't know how much shaking up you can do. You can't do any. There's no shaking up. There's like, no one on the I'm, bench. There's I'm no shaking up. Hey, who do you want behind Machado? That okay? You want to hit Machado third and bat Tatis clean up? Okay, we can play that game. I mean, we could absolutely play that game. I'm not opposed to doing something like that. But you're not getting some wholesale change here. If you want to put Tatis behind Machado, do it. That's chicken, fine. Turning chicken shit into chicken salad. That's what it Yeah, would you say chicken into shit? <laughs> I said turning shit into chicken salad. I don't even know what the hell I said. Um, yeah, there's no what are you gonna do? Shuffle the lineup up and do what? That's the like, it's not no, they're not they're not shuffling a lineup up. Um, they're just gonna need guys to be prefer, to perform. It's plain and simple. All right. I want to get back to this in a moment. I see our buddy Carlos is in the chat, which excites me. Oh, um, we're going to get baby. To Carlos in a moment. I love having Carlos here. Carlos is a loyal viewer. Scorched um, Earth, Scar- Carlos. I, I love it. And and a, a passionate Padres fan and a, and a friend. So it's good to have Carlos with us here in the chat. We'll get to Carlos in a moment. We need to get to underdog fantasy where Jim was a winner again tonight. Now, I won yesterday. I did not win today. But Jim has won again on underdog fantasy tonight. Remember, if you use promo code PODSWRAP, and we see a lot of you are doing this, you need to play along with us because I think a lot of you are. Promo code PODSWRAP, P-A-D-S-W-R-A-P. Click the link in the description down below. You're getting a 100% deposit match up to $100, which means you deposit $100, they give you $100 more to play along with us day in and day out. The pickums could not be easier. So what did, what did you hit on here today? Well, I hit on Fernando Tatis Jr. higher than a half total base. Like that. Like that. You Darvish higher than four and a half strikeouts. Free money. And Catavius Caldwell Caldwell Pope of the Denver Nuggets having lower than seven and a half points plus rebounds plus assists. So that hit lower than seven and a half on all that. What did he end up doing? Scoring four points and having two rebounds. Wow. You live dangerously to play the under there. Dangerously, three picks. Okay, twenty bucks paid out to hundred and twenty dollars. Twenty paid one twenty. Twenty paid one twenty. So six to one. Yep. Guys, you got to play winner. Long. Last night I hit nine to one on Tatis homering. Yeah, and it's just it is so fun. It's so addicting. Uh, our buddy Mark <laughs> Nimitz is like texting us nonstop about his underdog plays, and it it it's. If you want to win like big money, 
but not have to you, bet. You can kind of win crazy with some of the the. Uh, you right, can like win the crazy. One, yeah. Like like listen to this tonight. All right, I had four picks for fifteen dollars. Payout was two hundred and seventy bucks, and I missed on a Manny Machado single. If Manny hit a single, <laughs> that's crazy. I would have won two hundred and seventy bucks. It's very simple, very easy. It's fun. You can play multiple sports combined, so you just don't have to play baseball. You can play uh, baseball and basketball. You could play, um, uh, you know, once the NFL season comes around, you can play NFL and basketball, and it's just literally uh, addicting once you start. And once you win big, you are not going to want to stop. Um, it's <laughs> Trust us. Trust us. <laughs> trust it us is, on that. It is fun. It's it's a great way to um, you know, win big money without spending big money. And the best part is, if you sign up right now, your first one hundred dollars will be matched. So that's free money. You're getting free money if you join Underdog Fantasy right now using promo code Pods Wrap, and it, you're betting free money. Like I, you could bet fifteen free dollars if you sign up right now, hundred dollars, and they will match your first deposit of a hundred dollars. You can win like 250 bucks with free money. So go there right now, sign up for Underdog Fantasy, download the app, Pods Wrap, P A D S W R A P. Your first $100 will be matched by Underdog Fantasy. That's free money to win real money. Think about that. So do that right now. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Um, okay, where were we? Oh, yeah, I know where we were. Our buddy Carlos. So let's get back to Carlos and, and the chat here. Again, the Padres lose to the Cardinals on. Tuesday night at Petco in front of 40,000 people, 5-2. Um, I'm glad to have Carlos back here. I knew he would chime in at some point. Right. Um, so thank you, my friend. He says, New Year's St. Padres. Once they're down one run, they crumble. Bullpen is a big issue as well as starting pitchers being iffy. Bats are okay, not great. I mean, it is true. And again, teams that trail obviously don't have near the winning percentage of the teams that lead. Surprise. Um, but this year they do have one come-from-behind win. They trailed by a run relatively late home opener against the giants and it felt good in the moment like oh they overcame a late deficit in the win mm, that's They're like this is new and really exciting right but then today they go down by iran and they kind of wilt and yesterday they go down by three runs early i think in three of the four games prior to tonight they trailed three nothing three nothing and two nothing after one inning so they'd allow two runs in one first inning and three runs in two first innings in their prior four coming in they're falling behind and they're not built they're just not made to overcome multiple run deficits shoot they don't overcome one run deficits a lot in recent history so i think there's some truth in in what carlos is saying right there yeah yeah it again it just feels very eerily similar to last year and there's like no help on the way <laughs> you know um it's gotta be better. Gotta be a lot better. Manny's gotta be better. Xander's gotta be better. Um, those four games and those last four losses here, it's like you can't have that. If 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 anytime Manny and Xander go over or like they're one for eight combined and you end up losing the game, you're gonna lose a lot of games this year, probably. <laughs> Potentially, yep. Potentially. Thank you, Carlos. Appreciate you, man. Uh, Matthew, thanks again. He says the only time the umpires are doing a good job is when you aren't talking about them. Yeah, I just didn't understand putting all this focus on umpires. It's the last thing I want to discuss. All we do is talk about, oh, this guy's plate sucks tonight, or oh, Don't this guy missed the call. Shit about yeah. umpires. I mean, they're talking about going to robots. So why do we care about the intricacies and the nuances of umpiring? I'm going to be I'm, using them in five years. I'm telling you. This to me is, I think, and this is just an opinion. Mm -hmm. I don't know for a fact. It just feels like a major league baseball production trying to jam these ideas down the consumer throat um, to try things out for other broadcasts. You know, like I wouldn't be surprised if in the postseason for Fox or whatever, we get a same type of situation. Yeah, well, that I would be okay with if, again, they just <clears throat> lean to him like, hey, we have a review. What do you think, Mike? Oh, I think they missed it, and here's why. Okay. But I don't need the constant back and forth throughout the course of the game. Hey, what are you looking at um, for a pitch clock violation? I don't care. Um, E-Racing with Dale, thank you. He says, only line of change I could see is Kim lead off. Xander moved to Kim's spot. Don't move Crone. He's killing it. Xander probably wouldn't like that. 
Oh, right. Moving Kimmy into Bogey's leadoff spot <laughs> and moving Crony somewhere else in the lineup. So he's not, he doesn't want to move Crony because he's been killing it. But I don't know. I mean, Kim was really good as a leadoff hitter last year, and he, he hasn't exactly gotten off to the greatest start here. But again, small sample. Um, no. Are you moving Bogey and, and Kimmy right now? No. I don't think so either. No. I mean, I'm not a close. I'm not we are not in a desperate times call for desperate measures no. part of the season. No, we're definitely not. But, I mean, this is the same lineup besides Wadey being in there and, and put in Pauly that scored 13 runs on Sunday. Now, again, those 13 runs were scored off of like a triple A pitcher. And then the last two nights you face legit major league starters and you they shoved. Uh, let's get back to Carlos. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. He says, um, X crumbling with runners in scoring position, Crone choking with the double play. I mean, they were they were two for seven risk, but I don't know what they are now for the year. It's still got to be above 350. It was 388 coming into yesterday. They're two for eight since then. Um, I don't know. I thought Crone hit the ball hard. Certainly we'll be keeping our eye on Xander Bogarts with men in scoring position this year based on what he did a year ago. Um the Cronenworth thing is like he hit a ball hard off the mound. It just kind of sucked. Yeah, I'm not gonna like give him shit for that because it's a hard hit ball right at somebody in the sh in a in a semi quasi shift. Yeah, I don't know what the exit velocity was. The Evo. It was good. At, it was a it was a good at bad. I'm not gonna. Yeah. Like, but like, I mean, listen, we get it. They did not hit with men in scoring position a year ago. That's for sure. Those two specifically, and the Padres in general. And then he follows up. Thanks, Carlos, with uh, hit the ump on TV. Um, Oh, okay, so you're not a fan of Jesse on TV. He's at Bring Back Don. What is Don doing? TBS national games this early? Uh, yes. So there's April. What TBS or TNT games? I didn't even realize that. So I don't. <laughs> yeah, I think there is. He. That's what he said. Yeah. For multiple days is crazy, but um, I think this is updated. Bogey this year with runners in scoring positions in 429. Oh, that's good. But he's also like not getting a lot of opportunities with runners. So he's like four for nine or something. He's three for seven. Okay. Yeah, four or for nine, four for he's four. yeah three for seven. Yeah, it's it's way too early, right? Yeah, for that it's, it's way too early. It's way too early. But when he's I mean when he's that opportunity, he's he's done well. So uh, JD's third. Thank you. Says we've given up more runs. Or most runs maybe in baseball more than the A's. Well, they've played more games, right? The only team that's played seven no excuse me eight games is the padres and the dodgers every other team has played at least two fewer games right yeah so man. giving up the most runs in baseball doesn't worry me they've played two more games than everyone else if, if that continues you know two and a half months from now <laughs> that'll be concerning yeah and the point is if you're saying the pitching hasn't been good we all agree right. um e-racing e with dale thanks man he says crone didn't uh didn't choke 109 off the bat expected average 409 okay so yeah okay so if that was the exit velocity 109 off the bat yeah and the expected batting average was was 409 okay it, yeah that's why we're not being critical but again that as we said last night it kind of is what it is nobody's going to say at the end of the game yeah they lost but you know 409 expected batting average they lost you right. know and sometimes you hit a ball a squiver 19 feet up the third baseline and your expected batting average is 031 and it's an infield hit um, and then Carlos, thanks again. He says, don't hate Jesse. I hate his home run calls. I'm going to go. <laughs> I like Jesse. I understand how hard it is to call games. Um, and I, I think he does a really good job. And that's my honest opinion. Yeah, I want to hundred percent agree. Jesse is extremely smart. He does his research on everything. And I think he's, I think he's great. Yeah. And I like his voice a lot. I think it sits in a good spot. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to be critical of – no, I think no. they have really good commentators. Um, I really do believe that. I'll be but critical again, of, like, some things. ideas, like, that the the broadcast is doing with the Mike Winters situation. Yeah, I thought that was – yeah, I, I didn't like it. I mean, maybe whatever's happening on the pregame and postgame shows, but I'm not going to, like, say this, like, Jesse, like, no, so – yeah, no, I'm with you. Uh, guys, do want to remind you about our partner here on the wrap-up show, our friends over at Aura. If you're looking to get healthier, ORA.organic. Make sure to check them out or click the link in the description down below. Got to grab their probiotics, folks. I've taken them for over two years for digestion and mental clarity and heart health, and there are a zillion reasons to take a probiotic, so you should be taking one if you're not and take it from Aura because it's plant-based and they have 
pre-workout supplements and proteins for after workouts. And a lot of you probably take a fish oil. You can take the omega-3 oil that's plant-based from Aura. You get the same health benefits. They also have sleep and immunity pills as well. Uh, San Diego based, their co-founder Will is a huge Padres fan. They have offices in Liberty Station. It's a great, great company. I mean, we've been taking their products for years now at this point. So if you want to support the channel, if you're looking to get healthier yourself, uh, your friends, your family, go to ORA.organic or click the link in the description down below and pick up some plant-based supplements for 2024. Yeah, if you want to live a healthy lifestyle, they have everything you need. Uh, they have probiotics for, for your gut health. They have sleep pills if you have trouble sleeping. Um, they have the, if you're big into working out, they have the protein powder and they have the pre-workout uh, mix as well for you. So go to aura, www.ora.organic, pick up some of their supplements and uh, you'll thank us later. You think uh, Campy needs to be moved up in the lineup? Potentially, but then you weaken your bottom of the lineup yeah i don't mind him i mean where has he been batting sixth seventh no, seventh yeah i could move him to sixth i could but like he does with with how he's at with how he's doing at the plate right now he lengthens out your lineup if you have him hitting seventh and it gives an opportunity to get to the top of the lineup with runners on Mm -hmm. more often than not because you put him in the sixth hole that could be tough to get bogey and toddy and crony enough opportunities with runners in scoring position i mean those things are still going to happen but like i i like him i like him hitting where he's at if it's if it ain't broke don't fix it with him so we're good no, i agree with you um Chad just asked, if this team wins more than two games in a row, can y'all do the following wrap-up show in Foco Padres overalls? I like that. Um, and so these, <laughs> this has gotten a lot of traction. But someone put Jim's head on these. I forget who it was. What is this, man? These are the Foco short tails. <laughs> By the way, if you use promo code wrap-up show 15, you get 15% off at Foco. Click the link in the description down below. Did I just lose John? <laughs> I just <laughs> lost John. That'll happen. Bro. What My bad. You click, you just accidentally exited out of the thing. Yeah, basically. But hey, go to FOCO, click the link in the description down below. They got amazing bobbleheads, all officially licensed, great products, including those Padre short tail overalls. Use wrap up show 15, get 15% off your order. But no, we're not doing our show in those, are we? they win 10 games in a row, I'll do it. I like it. 10 games in a row anytime this season. I will wear those. Wait, overalls. so hold on. Now that you say that. Okay, so if they win 10 in a row, you're going to wear these. Yeah. On the wrap-up show. Yeah, 100%. Will you stand up and show us the full short yeah. short? Yes. Yes, I will do that. Okay. You heard Jim. So <laughs> this is like major league. Like start like, I don't know. Start winning. 10 games Jim's in a row. I will. Not only will I wear that for this show, I will wear that for the John and Jim show as well. Go subscribe. Oh, right. Go go subscribe to John and Jim on YouTube. John and Jim seven sixty. We have a radio show every day, three to six. Guys, I will, I will wear that if this team. The men's version or the female version? The men's version. Okay, guys. If you have a, you know, if you're if you have ten games home, in a row, ten. If you have someone at home, a loved one in your life that you think would want these short tails from Foco, there it's not just for men. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I like this. What the hell? John, bro. What's happening? I'm an idiot. What are you doing? Wait, hold on, let me get to a I don't know. I'm I'm it's been a long year. Um it's oh, the game eight. <laughs> Legends of the Fall, thank you. Constant lazy at bats from Manny. At least X battles. I wouldn't I say constant lazy at bats for Manny, but the eighth inning that was a bad at bat. Yeah, there's just sometimes there's just, his at bats look bad. Yeah, like like it's one of those things where he it can be confused for him yep. like being lazy because he's so smooth out there, but it's really not him being lazy. But I think putting up a better fight in that at bat would have been nice. Like you just knew, hey, he's gonna throw a slider away, boom, strikeout, so I'm gonna miss. You know.
and I'm not gonna the jogging the first thing is is completely bullshit and overrated because Manny has been a guy who posts every year and plays 150 plus games because he knows how to take care of his body and he's yeah, not gonna yeah. like run out a, a grounder to second on a Wednesday night to try to beat that out and potentially pop his hammy for no reason. I do wonder like the guys that are returnees on this team that are, you know, the heavy is the head that wear the crown guys, like the leaders, the captains, mm-hmm. the Musgroves, yeah. the Machados, the Bogarts, the Toddies. Like, you know, how do you make sure like none of the like worry creeps in here? It's so early. It's mm-hmm. absurdly early, but but you have the perspective of what happened last year and you know that you've done everything in your power all offseason to guard against any type of repeat performance and then here you are, you're trying, you're trying, you're trying, and you're eight games into the season, which is nothing, but you haven't played well. I mean, based on wins and losses, you're three and five. So, like, you know, does that mean you you tighten up more? You, quote, unquote, try harder? You guard against it more? I mean, I just don't know. Remember, like, like we said throughout spring training, you can say whatever you want, and then the lights get bright, and you win or lose in the major leagues. Like, yeah. so you can say that they're going to have a good approach – and you could say that this trade of Juan Soto has made the team better. And you can say whatever the hell you want. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, it, it doesn't matter. It's what's your record. So right. I, I don't know. It'll just be fascinating to say. Um, God, I hate the term heavy is the head that wears the crown. <laughs> oh, I need that shirt. I need I need H-I-H-T-W-T-C. Right. right. Heavy is that honestly, if I could just snap my finger and have like a merchandise line. I want heavy as the head that wears the crown, like a do- like a dope, cool wrap up show shirt. Here are the things I want. I want heavy as the head that wears the crown. Mm-hmm. I want marine layer, even though it's an actual company that exists mm-hmm. that sells nice merchandise. This actually, I think, is marine layer. Okay. Um, but I would love a marine layer shirt that was cool. I'd love a heavy as the head that wears the crown. What w- what would you if you could put anything on a shirt and make it cool? I don't know. <laughs> you don't have anything from the wrap up show. I don't know. It's early. <laughs> oh God, that'd be a funny one. It's early. It's early I think it'd be a good shirt. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not a I'm not a shirt designer. I don't. Did you do like, a, a weighty shirt? <laughs> Jesus Christ. A like Winters TV. <laughs> <laughs> All what, right. What's your What's your takeaway from that? that? That's what. That's the shirt I want. What's your takeaway? What's your takeaway? What's your takeaway, John? I don't know. If, I don't know if I need that. <laughs> sure. What's your takeaway, John? Um, what happened tonight, Dodgers Giants? I saw the, the Giants lost. Dodgers keep winning. Shocker. This is this is shocker. Yeah. Um. Okay. Here's what I would say. Join us tomorrow on the radio, three to six, or on YouTube. Search for John and Jim seven sixty. We will be recapping. Stop whatever you're doing every twenty minutes. It's I'm more like annoying than me leaking the chat. Something. Sorry, sorry. I am just kidding. Um, join us tomorrow. We'll recap the series because we go in the air from three to six. The series will end by four, presumably. I think it starts at one tomorrow. So we'll hear from Mike Schilt tomorrow, play back some of his post-game sound, and we'll react to you know a series against the Cardinals and then look ahead. I think they're off Thursday and then Giants opener this weekend. They'll be in Northern California at Oracle for a three-game series. And then, again, it's nine of the next 12, I want to say, on the road after tomorrow, including Dodger Stadium and Oracle. So I wouldn't call it easy um and hopefully the Padres can win tomorrow behind who's pitching joe musgrove uh gr- uh musk musky <laughs> yeah musky they they could use you know five innings two runs from joe musgrove couldn't they something like that they could use like six innings no runs from joe musgrove yeah, six innings one run yeah no runs would be good too i agree let's, let's just let's just say make it easy no runs no runs allowed by joe six innings. so easy All right, so join us tomorrow on the radio, 3 to 6, San Diego Sports 760, and on YouTube, search for John and Jim at 760. Um, All right, guys, subscribe, please. We're trying to get to 6,000 subscribers this month. We basically have to. Um, Or we're going to fire ourselves. Correct. So help us get to 6,000 subs. Um, It doesn't cost you a penny. Just subscribe. Smash the like button for us. We're trying to get to 150 likes here tonight or on replay. Follow us on X at John Schaefer at Jim Russell SD. Thank you for the super thanks. If you're here on replay, we appreciate those. And thank you for the memberships, those that have clicked join. 
Um, support our partners, Mark Nimitz and Farmers Insurance. He could save you $750 or more. Click the link in the description down below. Aura, if you're looking to get healthier, they're plant-based nutritional products, ORA.organic. Underdog Fantasy, use promo code PODSWRAP, P-A-D-S-W-R-A-P. You will get a 100% deposit match up to $100. All right, guys, we'll see you tomorrow on the radio at 3 p.m. For Jim, I'm John. This has been The Wrap-Up Show. Thanks, guys. Peace out, brother.